Welcome back, our co-host, New York Times best-selling author John Gilstrap. Johnny, good morning, Robert. Jefferson County Prosecuting Attorney Matthew Harvey. Good morning. He has no jurisdiction right now in this room. And no jacket. I forgot it this morning. Walked out, left my jacket. You know what, though? I like the relaxed look. <sighs> I don't. I, but Is it bugging you to not have the jacket? It is, yeah. And uh, that's why I always keep a spare jacket <laughs> at my office. <laughs> I don't but you're need, wearing suit pants. You got pinstripe pants. I, I know. Will the paisley jacket go with this? Well, you got to have a, a blue blazer and then a gray jacket. And I, I keep spares of those everywhere. And an extra shirt in case you spill coffee on this one? Yes. Okay. I really do. Yeah. Because it, it's happened quite a bit. You're the only person I've ever met who treats blazers like reading glasses. Just keep them everywhere in case you lose them. <laughs> well, um, do you lose a lot of jackets? With, sometimes the mornings get kind of hectic Are trying you, to get out the door and you have a lot of other people that need your attention besides yourself you're the guy you that, have like a screaming four-year-old oh yeah well i remember those days s- As a matter of fact our next guest like can yes, identify both, both of them know exactly what i'm talking about and actually probably have it worse than i do robbie blair and michelle sadat good morning to both of you good morning thanks for having us on robbie was cracking us up with his uh episodes this morning of not having a, any sleep because oh. of young children we've all been there you know what the day goes on we continue and there's stuff to get done so so you, you just gotta plow through it man. that's right that's right right that's right just everybody double check his work today that's well the- thankfully i'm you know i i like you said i have lots of accountability i'm on air live right now so right. any mistake like it's going to get fact checked on the comments and <laughs> mm-hmm. uh you know got my burnt bean coffee downtown so i'm, I'm feeling a little bit better I used to work with a fellow in radio around this area named John Taylor, and John uh, was about the same age as I was, and we were both starting families and having kids, and he had his first kid before I had my first, he had his second kid before I had my second, and when I was, uh, we were ready for our, uh, expecting our second one, and he already had two, he said to me, do you know how you thought you weren't getting enough sleep with your first child? And I said, yeah. He goes, you were getting plenty of sleep. Because <laughs> he already knew with the second one coming along, and it turns out he was right. <laughs> Yeah, buddy. Yes, indeed. Well, don't worry about it. You can always sleep while you're driving. So many other people do. (laughs) I've never thought of it that way, Rob. Sure. I I truly have never thought of it that way. Grab a little nap every now and then. Okay. Uh, We've got a food fest that we're talking about here. We sure do. Let's get hungry together. Yeah, and it's year four of this particular festival. It's a little bit different of a brand this year, but um, it's year four. Advocate Insurance Group is the... presenting sponsor but really like the partner in all things um making it happen right so that's why michelle is here she's a board member but also um you know just a big champion of this event um and they're back with us for for year four um we're really excited about it the weather looks pristine yes really looking forward to it and the weather is on point yay and i want to say this is robbie's four-year kind of anniversary into yeah. Main Street Martinsburg right, events. Rob. This was his first event mm-hmm. um, wow. four years ago with Main Street. Yeah, so. don't don't tell anybody else, but this one is a real special one to me because <laughs> it is like my introduction, a baptism by fire, really, you know, when you on took the job over for a month. Randy and, Lewis. Yeah, yeah, yeah exactly, yeah. exactly. And it's great, Matt, that you're here representing Jefferson County because our friends over at Charlestown now are coming to volunteer this weekend. Oh, that's fantastic. We volunteer at their stuff. They come to our stuff. So uh, great. a very wonderful relationship with Liz and everybody over there. Um, you know, just a great a great day. Skinner Accident uh, Injury Law Firm. They're the cup sponsor. So, again, uh, some Jefferson County folks. Mm-hmm. Uh, CEC, uh, they do a lot of work with uh, the city of Martinsburg and and whatnot. There are beer garden sponsors and um, you know good and bad. The WVU game's kicking off after the event, so there's plenty of places downtown. So like, if you wanted to throw up after you ate a lot, you watch WVU play football. That's right. You get sick and then you're good. Yeah, typically we'd have the game on in the beer garden, and you know people can hang out and stuff like that. But we're just gonna have to treat it like a tailgate. Right, and that's what Neil Brown wants us to do: is have fun <laughs> and enjoy the weather that's and right. the tailgate. The so experience, enjoy that's the what experience. We're going to do this weekend in Martinsburg. Yeah, very nice. What time do you start? So there's it's, not going to be a, the game on. Well, the event ends at six, um, and the game kicks off at seven. So. Oh, okay, okay. okay. So it's kind of perfect okay. time. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. It's yeah. truly a tailgate. You know, the Garage on King has three TVs. Stoney's has a TV. The Berkeley has several TVs. So plenty of places downtown to watch the game. We can just. 
I wouldn't say stumble over because nobody's going to get out of hand, but we're going right. to make our way over to some of the, the establishments downtown to catch some hopefully winning football. I really hope they win, but that's neither here nor there. I have to come back and talk with Colin about that one. Yeah, Colin's been in misery all, yeah. all fall here. Poor who's guy. The, who's the, who is it this week? <laughs> Arizona. Going out okay. to Arizona. Yeah, yeah, that's right. Yeah. yeah, so what time does Food Fest start? It starts at 11, 11 a.m., uh, and it runs until 6 p.m., um, you know, we've got quite a lineup, um, of diverse food trucks that are coming in. Um, but I also want to mention, you know, we have quite a budding restaurant scene downtown right now. Really and that building. was kind of, uh, a part of why we wanted to, you know, maybe shift gears a little bit from it all just being about food trucks, because, you know, all of our events kind of have the same makeup. Like whenever it's a street festival, um, we have to bring in food trucks when we're expecting 10 to 15,000 people. Mm -hmm. Um, for the sheer volume of it. Um, but, you know, we've got quite a restaurant scene downtown right now. Um, so we've encouraged all the restaurants to have some sort of uh, in-season fall dish or drink or specialty. Um, you know, last week was apple harvest. So mm -hmm. again, we're celebrating our agricultural heritage and the farm to table experience. So we're hoping um, for people who are visiting this weekend that they get the full Eastern Panhandle experience. The, foliage is on display the weather's nice um and they can pop into some really cool restaurants and it's an election season <laughs> don't remind and me and you're uncontested don't well not for me i'm talking about for the other candidates you can relax. in berkeley county that want to go out and have an opportunity to see how many people all at once yeah 10 to fifteen thousand is what we average on these things mm -hmm. um according to the cvb's reports and that's usually um that's usually non-martinsburg residents mm -hmm. so the CVB has access, and they're great partners on a lot of stuff that we do. Um, so they have access to um, a, a system called Placer AI that, you know, I don't want to get into all the scary details of how they track us, but um, <laughs> people who have cell phones not registered in the city of Martinsburg, they're able to track and see who's there. Oh, um, we're all track. This is why that cracked me up during covid when they're saying they're putting a chip in you so they can track you they don't need to you got this thing right yeah here. You're, you're posting from the thing that they're tracking you on right? yeah that's, that's they, they they they'll track you everywhere you go so yeah we we usually get the data from them that uh non martinsburg residents it averages between 10 and fifteen thousand people by the way colin wow. pointed out that uh you could put the shepherd game on tv downtown mm -hmm. during the food uh fest because that Colin, uh, you work in the game yeah yeah. What is that, a noon kickoff, Colin? Is that an away game? Two o'clock, he says. Two o'clock. Yeah. Where, where, where's Shepard playing, Colin? Oh, just just get, get a quick cheer. Mm -hmm. I think it's homecoming for them. Last week. Oh, last, last week, week was. was. Yeah, yeah. Okay. What do you got, Colin? You put me on the spot, but it's cuts down. Cuts yeah. down. That's cool. right. I remember Nick talking about that because that's been that's a tough a big game, game. for Shepard. They're undefeated. Yeah. Cuts down's always good. Well, you know what? It is the, it's not the Mountaineer Beer Garden. It is the Blue Gold Beer Garden sponsored by CEC. So Shepherd hey, is blue and gold. It yeah. works. And right. uh, we'll, we'll encourage folks to, to tune into that yeah. for sure. On the uh, WRNR TV 10 YouTube channel. Just uh, bring it up. Or That's if you it. have uh, Comcast cable, it's on TV 10 on Comcast cable. So you can watch that between yeah. 2 and 5. Eat and drink. And then two hours later, WVU. That's right. And the music. Yeah, the music. I'm really with, excited about yeah, the music. Yeah, so, so Michelle came to me, I don't know if it was last year or a couple years ago, and she was like, I heard this band, and they're just killer. Yes. We were just talking before we went on air. Um, I have three little ones, a nine-year-old and two seven-year-olds. And so our plan is to take them to all 55 counties in the state. Mm -hmm. And so we went out to Thomas. Oh, yeah. And I was went, in Thomas took this them weekend. to the Purple Fiddle. And Very this cool. was their first time seeing kind of like, you know, live music, more of like a concert. And um, Kindred Valley, which is um, a band based out of Huntington, um, was the performance for the evening. I mean, we fell in love with them. They were great. The kids were like getting autographs and like had such a good time. Good. And my kids were like, Mom. You're in Main Street, <laughs> Martinsburg. You put on all these concerts and help. We have to get Kindred Valley. Yeah. And so, lo and behold, we're going to bring in Kindred Valley. So. And this this serves as like a little PSA to anybody who wants to get involved with Main Street, right? Mm -hmm. um, I always say like people who are involved with Main Street stuff, not selfishly, but like you know, if you want to do something well, you do something that you think you would really enjoy yourself. Right. Mm -hmm. And like, this is a PSA to anybody out there. Like, if you got some cool ideas, like we make it Bring happen. Bring them. Right. Yeah. Like we make it happen. And uh, 
So yeah, Kindred Kindred Valley, uh, they're a West Virginia group um, singing kind of like a Folky, um, yeah, kinda. folk Americana kind of country music, like not Nashville country music, no. but a, a regional kind of sound. Um, we have the Plate Scrapers, who is a they're a regional band, and actually they're jetting out of here um, afterwards, and they're going to Baltimore. They're opening like the same night for Billy Strings, who is one of the biggest uh, bluegrass people in the world right now, number one Billboard, whatever. Um, and then we have a local uh, artist named Chelsea McBee and Yay. the Random Assortment, That's who uh, she's just recently become very involved with Main Street Martinsburg and our design committee. Um, so it all, the whole point of this really is like for our locals to feel like this is a piece of them and it, and it reflects our culture and history um, and heritage. And then for people who are visiting, because we know we're going to have a lot of visitors, um, this is what makes us unique, right? Mm -hmm. This is what makes us us the food the recipes the, the the everything we want it to feel distinctly like martinsburg in west virginia so i think we've had chelsea mcbee on this show probably have uh, she's awesome it was a few it's been a few years mm -hmm. but uh, unless i'm confusing her i think she does um country roads in a minor key oh i think unless i'm confusing her with somebody else but it was it was pretty impressive she is her voice i mean her voice is great yeah, we we listen to her in the office all the time. She's great. Yeah, that's under that's wonderful. What uh, do you have any other things coming up between now and the end of the year, Robbie? Sure, we we absolutely do. I mean, we'll we'll catch our breath for a, about a week or so, and then we're full force into Christmas stuff. Mm -hmm. So following this weekend, um, we have Shop Small Saturday, which is Amex started year I think fifteen years ago now. Um, so we obviously participate in this year. For Christmas, we are, and I'll have to come back and do just a whole Christmas day, um, but we are doing our tree lighting on Shop Small Saturday, a small one-hour live music and some some other things on on Shop Small Saturday, so that's the Saturday after Thanksgiving. Um, it's a little bit different from what we normally do. That would be then, the 30th this year. That's correct. Yep. And then we'll follow it up with the parade on Tuesday. Uh, the Christmas Cash for Kids Jingle Downtown fundraiser is the Wednesday, and then... Um, that following Saturday will be our Christmas on Main Festival, um, which we're really, really excited about. We have a, a carousel merry-go-round this year for, for kids to enjoy. Um, and it's just a great time of year. Martinsburg looks so beautiful for the holidays, um, thanks to both our volunteers um, and the, the city of Martinsburg's Public Works Department. Uh, the collaboration there is is very harmonious. So. Um, yeah, we, we got that, and we'll do the apple drop to, to ring in the new year, but um, I'm sure I'm missing something else that we're doing. But Will you be shutting down some streets to pull off these events? Of course. Of course. We we close from uh, from King to Ray Street, and then the 100 block both east and west on uh, Martin and Burke um, for, for all of our street fests, mm -hmm. um, for Christmas on Main and the Fall Food Fest this weekend. Where do you recommend people park? Oh, man, that's always the tough one, right? Free uh, parking all day. Right. It's Don't free. have to pay the meters. There's three municipal lots. Um, and, you know, I get it. You're not going to park and walk directly into the event. But like I said earlier, there's going to be ten to 15,000 people here, and they all found somewhere to park. So uh, it is a different experience, but you're going to be within walking distance. Um, actually, That'll just help your appetite. That's you right. have to walk right. five blocks. That's walk right. up those calories. One of, yeah. One of my good friends uh, good who you. does a lot of stuff downtown, he just got back. He was in Italy for, for about a week. And actually, Raven was in Italy for a couple of weeks, too. Mm -hmm. um, and we were talking about this weekend and stuff. And there's kind of a joke online about, like, you know, really big strip malls and stuff. Like, the European mind can't comprehend a Chili's parking lot or whatever. And I'm like, yeah, they couldn't comprehend a street fest because every weekend is a street fest there because mm -hmm. everything is very walkable and people are very used to parking or maybe not even parking just walking or taking public transit to get places so mm -hmm. um yeah there will be free parking that was a little bit of a tangent is there any shuttles <laughs> speaking of public transit we did that one year we did do the epta trolley one year and the feedback we it, got was like yeah it wasn't needed i don't think i mean yeah. people really there is a lot of street parking the three um city lots you know and really we don't get negative feedback mm -mm. From the 
people who actually go. I mm-hmm. think we hear more from the people that don't go that the parking's bad. <laughs> so take that as you that's, will. That's probably um, the best way to put it. Yeah. That's the best but way to put one it. thing I wanted to mention too before I forget, Advocate um, Insurance Group, since we're the sponsors, we have a big tent set up behind the beer garden. Mm-hmm. And we're going to have kind of giveaways and fun stuff for the kids. And I uh, just want to invite everyone um, to come on out with the family and um, hang out with us at the advocate tent behind the beer garden and a great addition to that talking about being family friendly and stuff because like you know we do have a beer garden it's not going to be out of control it's not like a a pub in there um the the family friendly atmosphere is all throughout and right beside of your tent Mm -hmm. you don't even know this oh a lot of gelato is going to be opening up their grand opening this saturday oh that's great so we have a brand new gelato store right beside the family friendly advocate insurance uh tent it's called a lotto gelato a A lot lot of gelato gelato. i like it and Mm -hmm. uh yeah and they got all sorts they got all sorts of stuff in there and there's a kids there's another kid zone as well there's plenty plenty of kids down on king street we got uh, a, a bounce house that jefferson uh rentals um, provides and um, yeah, there, there's lots of stuff. I, Susie the Clown will be there painting. I have a suggestion, John, before you go, real quick. If you got a lot of gelato on one section, the next section over has to be called the Calzone. Oh, Ooh. okay. Yeah. I like that. Yeah. I'm I like down. That a lot. Calzone. The yeah. Calzone. I'm calzone. Just saying. Throw that out love there. Calzone. People love a Calzone. Yeah. Now, how about seating? You, you, you get your big sloppy sandwich or That's whatever right. it is you're going to. So, how about seating? So we have at each intersection is kind of how we like to do it because, you know, when you're walking down the streets, you want to be able to walk unimpeded and Mm -hmm. see everything. Um, So at each intersection, we have about five large tables with eight chairs around each of them. Um, So So they go down the cross streets? Yeah. uh, No, no, no. Right in the right in the middle of Queen in the intersection of Martin and Burke and King. Uh, so that's about 15 tables with eight chairs. Uh, and then we have high top tables all throughout for people to kind of, you know, just park it, eat while they're standing and stuff. And how like about that. at the music venue? Is there seating there? Uh, well, so that's one of the intersections. Uh, okay. The music is directly across from the beer garden on, uh, they're right in between the Blue White uh, and Children's Home Society on okay. East Burke. Um, so, yes, there, there mm-hmm. is, uh, obviously there it's not go. enough, but. Colin, ready with the, the graphic? Good job, Colin. Way to yeah, go, Colin. Thank you. Lo- things you love to see. Mm-hmm. Speaking of the blue white, what? It'll be back online here soon. Oh, really? Can't give away too many details, but. But the hope what is, is what does Mayor Knowles say? Keep your eyes and ears open. Martinsburg's moving forward. Yeah, the hope is there as, for the, the blue white to return. Yeah, it, it will. As a awesome. grill, as a as a as restaurant. A blue white. Okay, mm-hmm. that's the plan right now. From from what I've been told, okay. we got a bakery opening up before Christmas. Mm-hmm. I'm just really, really, really a new bakery. Yeah. Oh yeah, I heard about Casa this. Casa old building. Yeah, uh, who was in here the other day telling me about that off the air? It was going to be another. Oh, I know. We were down at the well, Tuesday when we were down at the uh, forum. doing the forum yeah. at the county uh, building. Someone was saying a new bakery was going Where's into Casa Vizone. Casa Vizone's old building. Okay. Yeah. So it's pretty turnkey because Brenda and Charlie have kept it really up, maintained in there. Um, and, you know, that that's kind of the story with vacancies downtown. We never want, uh, we never want vacancies in downtown, sure. right? Um, but. I appreciate building owners who won't just take the first person who wants to put their hobby in there. And no offense to people who want to make their hobby their business, um, but Brenda and Charlie had a vision for what they wanted in there, and they wanted a bakery or they wanted yeah. a deli shop. A, a bakery is always better, yeah. period. Right. It doesn't matter right. what else the competition right. is. A bakery is always better. Right. 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 So, you know, there, there's a lot of that happening. There's a few other places across there on Queen that um, were, you know, the the building owners working on the right tenant to be in there. So, so. have you seen uh, with the new apartments that have opened up? And I know there's already uh, several of those that have been rented out. Mm-hmm. Uh, have you seen a difference in downtown Martinsburg in terms of uh, people walking around or shop business because of the new residents moving in? You know, that's probably a question for the business owners themselves. Um, I I'm down there, you know, frequently walking uh, during during business hours. Um, we have our ambassador program that has been doing a lot more outreach and, and small walking events downtown. Um, and I think that that community is, is getting built back up, right? Mm-hmm. I do think that there is uh, some momentum there that people want to do things, right? Like it, it's not a, it's not an anomaly that people want the things to do. Um, and, and there's certainly some traction there with, with people going in and enjoying the amenities that we already have. Um, I think that's 
sometimes the the rub that that people don't understand like we are not trying to change martinsburg at main mm -hmm. street we're trying to embolden and empower the existing business makeup and the existing um you know built culture that is there you know um and i think i think that that is starting to see a little bit more of a a takeoff if you will michelle why are you on the board of main street martinsburg well, I joined the board probably 16 years ago. I've been on it for a minute, and um, I started my business downtown. Um, we, we've been on Queen Street since 2008, and so even oh, back then, Oh, my goodness. Then, you picked yeah. a tough time to open a business. Well, it was a great time to <laughs> yeah. open a business, and um, it, it's, it's panned out pretty well, so I, I can't complain, but we love being downtown. Um, I saw the positive things that were going on downtown way back in 2008 which um matt you were uh, downtown with me yeah yeah um, absolutely around that time as well so um we were the then young professionals now yeah, we're mid, not <laughs> middle-aged professionals <laughs> um but yeah so i think it's gone through its ebb and flows mm -hmm. i remember when the shenandoah opened up um which was just a couple years ago but yeah. Um, we saw that kind of influx of like, hey, look at these young people walking around downtown looking, you know, for something to to do and businesses to, to patronize. And so I think it's still maybe a little bit early mm -hmm. um, because they've only opened up, I think, a, a couple. Yeah, like 80. Yeah. yeah. So I think there's more that's going to obviously continue to come. But we I mean. Honestly, when well, I'm downtown, I'm seeing people walk around that look like me and are, you know, going to get lunch and yeah. So M Michelle started out at the Canterbury. Was it the yeah. Canterbury Executive um, Center? Newberry. Newberry Executive yeah. Center, which is now the Hub Suite. And then she's now p purchased a building. They've grown yeah. her business, renovated, yeah. renovated, yeah. and yeah. invested in downtown. So yeah, we took a pretty cool story. A building that had been vacant for eight. 10 years and needed a complete gut and overhaul and we did that and put that investment in i think it was pretty much early on you weren't mm -hmm. seeing a yeah. lot of investment downtown but yeah. we believed in it yep. i still believe in it yep. we love being part of uh, main street martinsburg love seeing you know new blood come in with new energy and, well not um, today though but <laughs> <laughs> well maybe he's lacking the energy now that he has the little ones at home well but. let the viewers decide what are the comments saying do i look sleepy on there <laughs> no they say you look great man. oh good actually well, just said good job robbie and michelle from patty mcintyre well Aww. thank you thanks patty thank you and and it's worth noting I haven't even brought it up. We have some merchandise that we'll be selling this weekend, too. You got so the hat? I'm, I'm modeling it today. But what did they not bring to the show, Rob? Food. Neither, neither food, 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 food nor fest. merchandise. So, <laughs> yeah. We got the hat. The hat, is, the hat counts. Yeah. Yep. Hat, stickers, whole deal. Yeah. Well, how do you get the merch? Uh, it'll be at our, our table that we're selling stuff in the, the beer garden. What, what food trucks do you have there, by the way? i got about a minute. Cool. Let's start here. Um... Toasted. Toasted will be back. Something so, fire. Slinging their, their grilled cheese. Uh, BC Catering, which is going to be barbecue. Taqueria La Mexicana. Classy Caboose. Um, Kona Ice. Traveling Tom's Coffee. Food by Fire. Food by Fire. Um, one of, the, one of my faves. Yeah. Uh, King of Flavor, which is a Jamaican uh, food. Um, we got Funneling Around Funnel Cakes. Taco Oasis. Big Yaks Barbecue. Ethan Flatbreads. Uh, <laughs> Sorry to Sorry. Mike, if that's okay. Um, <laughs> almost having concessions. Country Roads Coffee Company. Taste of the Philippines. Frosty Dog. Um, their, their hot dogs and ice cream. Franklin Smokin' Barnyard Barbecue. Jam Rock Grill. James Rumsey Chef Express. Ford's Fish Shaft. For, Ford's Fish Shack. The Gourmet Geyza. Maddie Ann's Pierogies. And, for the first time ever, Bricks 27 will be bringing their... Uh, mobile truck parked in front of their new venue on Queen Street. The old Emirates building is a new uh, new event venue. So they'll be there probably talking about their new event venue there on Queen Street and selling their Bricks 27 Starts food. at 11 a.m. Saturday. That's right. 11 a.m. to 6 p.m. downtown Martinsburg. Great stuff. Thanks. Good to see you again, Rob. Thanks for having me on. All right. Get a nap. <laughs> Michelle, good to see you. Thank you, you for coming too. in. Thanks.